I'm Cody O'Sell. I work for Brickmania, and I'm going to talk about this Omaha beach display. Uh, one of the beachheads of Normandy Beach in France. Um, this is a display that took about a month to build just the beach portion of it. Um, the LST is a landing craft. Um, so this would be D-Day plus one. Because um, the LST would not be this close to shore um, on D-Day itself because there's a risk of the ship getting destroyed. <laughs> yes. From the naval guns. Yes. Um, so this is just a scene of all the vehicles being unloaded from the LST and from smaller ships um, delivering tanks, ammunition, personnel, um, jeeps, trucks, cannons, all the fun stuff that you need to win a war. Um, our water is just um, pieces of Lego. It's just one by one round um, plates, blue, light blue, uh, clear. And where does one source this quantity of one by one trans clear parts? Um, that I'm sure we bought. Um, I wasn't in the process. I wasn't involved in the process. So this is the, the beauty of working for Brickmania is that you just happen to have the enormous quantity of uh, elements suitable for use as water. We do. Um, we also get a lot of donations and a lot of these um, ships and vehicles. I know the beach for sure that was built with just a lot of donation Lego. Um, people donate to us. That's awesome. You know it's going to a good cause. Awesome things will be built. Yeah, so we're, we're thankful that people donate so we don't have to spend as much money <laughs> building mocks definitely, like this. Definitely. And uh, run us through uh, some of the vehicles we're looking at on the top of the, uh, the little ship here. Um, Not so little ship here. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we have some Jeeps and we have Jeeps with canopies. And we have custom canopies? Yes, custom canopies. Um, I think it was a guy in Australia, I've been told, made those canopies um, and is no longer making them. Oh. Um, so we can't sell the canopies anymore. Um, and then we have deuce and a half trucks. Um, towing anti-aircraft guns, um, some howitzer cannons, anti-tank cannons. Um, that's just what's on the ship itself right now. Um, we have some M4 Shermans on this landing craft and they have these swamp uh, like snorkels. So they drive through swamps and the tank, uh, the engines can still breathe. So like, like this makes, it, that, that's a little less sad, like it, that's fine. It's yeah. not going to like ruin the... No, it, it won't ruin. The, the engine in the Sherman is in, in the back. Very good, very good. And what kind of reference materials do you guys uh, look at? What's like your single greatest source? Is there like a particular archive site that you guys uh, find to be very, very good? Or some sort of uh, press photos? Um, Dan Siskin has a very large library of military vehicles and schematics. And he actually has some blueprints that he designs his vehicles from. Well, how about that? <laughs> That's pretty cool. And uh, what, what are we looking at here, uh, the beach scene? Um, well, this would be at low tide, um, and you can see there are some beach obstacles that the Germans would put in place. Um, basically, what you're seeing here is just logs with mines on the ends of them. So at high tide, when they were hoping that we would land, um, the ships and things would hit these and explode and not be able to land on the beach. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, and they, they also put logs going this way, and they would have mines laying on top of the logs. Um, but we figured it would be best to disassemble them. To, for D-Day plus one, um, we have bulldozers pushing the um, obstacles into some craters that were made from naval guns, just kind of cleaning up the beach, getting room for the vehicles. Um, we kind of have a POW camp set up. Okay, that's what I was thinking, okay. Because um, we had a lot of Germans and we didn't know what to do with them all, so we just figured we would put them in a line, surrendering. Is this, is this like a realistic occurrence? Um, yes. So that, that is amazing to kind of just to look at that, to think about what that means and what that signifies. Uh, just uh, very, very interesting. Yeah, there probably wouldn't have has been this many Germans. Um, they probably would have been fleeing back um, farther into France. Yeah. <laughs> um, but hey, this is a pretty cool outcome, I guess. We're speaking from like an uh, American perspective at this time. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very cool, very cool. And then moving on down here, uh, what are we looking at uh, towards this direction? Is that a, uh, like a medic unit? Uh, yes. Well, if you notice, um, these are very iconic. Um, these obstacles here, I don't know if if you have seen um, Saving Private Ryan. That, that's like a total thing. I think I, I'm not really even too much of a military builder myself, but I myself have built like six or seven of these for like a weird sure. scene that I did. And, and you, your technique for building them is also unique. You're not using just like a Travis brick with a bunch of bricks sticking out on the ends. You have some nice tiles. Right. Um, well, I can't claim uh, all of this stuff. Um, you see Kasowitz, um 
is also the builder. He was, he's been at Brickmania longer than I have, and he came up with the design for these hedgehogs and a lot of the beach obstacles. Shouts out to him. Very nice, very nice. Uh, how many people would you say are like responsible for all of the builds on this uh, table? And maybe there's too many to name because we're taking into account vehicles and stuff, but like this build, how many people like directly involved would you say? Um, I would say three okay. um, most directly involved. Um, so, uh, yourself? Myself, I built um, most of the cliffs and I built the bunkers, the German bunkers, the gun emplacement, um, and a majority of the beach itself. Um, some of it was repurposed. Um, the LST was part of an older display um, in the Battle of Peleliu in the Pacific, yeah. um, and we just kind of modified it and made it Normandy Beach. Sand is sand? France. Yeah, sand is sand. Um, and if you notice, I don't know if you can tell with your camera, but the beach is sloping down yeah. gradually. Um, what does the understructure look like? Well, the understructure is mostly hollow. Okay. Um, Dan Siskin developed a technique. These are all built on 48 by 48 um, stud base plates. And then we put them together with Technic um, axles. That's so, awesome. so we can transport it, we can put it in boxes, um, and it's strong. Um, he built kind of a internal structure is a honeycomb pattern. Um, so we call it with uh, two by four bricks and two by two bricks kind of stacked on each other. That's so they super cool. In all the sides and it's very strong. You can stand on these and it won't break. Really? That is impressive. And you can also like toss them into a van and drive halfway across the country and put it on display somewhere. Yep. Yeah. It, it, ha it hasn't broken yet. So <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And then I guess to kind of round us out here, let's take a look at uh, these fortifications. What, what are we looking at here? Um, well, these are, I basically base this one off of, it is historically accurate, but I base it off of the movie Saving Private Ryan because everyone knows um, this one. If you've seen the movie, they, they attack it and then they come up through the trenches and a guy takes a flamethrower and, you know, burns everybody inside of it. <laughs> well, how about that? Um, so I made this, so if we ever do a D-Day, we can put machine gunners in here. That's, and it'll just like snap, that is super slick that it just kind of pops off like that. Yeah, I want, I want to make it strong and simple enough so whoever sets this up because i'm not going to travel every time um with this definitely so, definitely so it's someone else can kind of easily put this together relatively easily and it even comes out like that wow and that, there's kind of a, a view of the honeycomb pattern i was talking about oh, I see. and we just use whatever color bricks we can because it's on the inside yeah, whatever's available very cool and uh i think there are some pretty neat details on the back side of said hill or incline uh what do we have on the back here well, on the back here, um, kind of more of a last minute decision. A last minute decision was uh, to put some caves on the back side, um, some tunnels, some concrete tunnels. Um, we have a map room there, um, kind of depicting like how the Germans would plan out how to defend. Beat those pesky Americans? Yeah, those pesky Americans. Pesky English, pesky French. Ugh. Yeah. Canadian. Didn't work out, unfortunately, but. I, I love this. It's very meta. Very meta. That's what I thought. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it definitely is. And it's kind of, um, I put a wine cellar in the base. Uh, maybe you can see it from that side. Uh, we kind of like to add humor. I doubt there would be any wine cellars um, on Normandy. One can hope. Yeah, you know, maybe a general or a major wanted a wine cellar. Um, awesome. But kind of a map room in there also um, underneath that. Uh, gun emplacement. Very cool, very cool. C Cody, thank you so much for sharing with us. Okay. Wonderful build and uh, wonderful contributions by everyone involved. Thank you.